Okay, horizontal circular motion. Remember that this is motion where the acceleration, uh, centripetal acceleration, is perpendicular to the force of gravity. So here's a typical question. Um, we have a 1200 kilogram car that is driving around a circular section of road at 20 meters per second. So again, the acceleration here for this car is in this direction towards the center of the circle. And that's a centripetal acceleration. Okay. And suppose we're asked what is the minimum coefficient of friction needed to keep this car from sliding. So you can imagine if this was a warm summer day and the road was nice and dry, the car would stick to the road very easily and it would go around the corner. But if it was a cold winter day and perhaps the road was a bit icy, traveling at the same speed, the car might slide away from the center of the circle. Okay. So it's the force of friction between the tires and the road that is keeping the car moving in a circular path. So as always, what we want to start with is Newton's second law. So we're looking at the net force on this car and we're looking at the net force that is causing this circular motion. Okay, so centripetal acceleration. And in the direction of the acceleration, the only force that's pulling the car this way is the force of friction. Okay, there are two other forces acting on the car, the force of gravity downwards and the normal force upwards. There's also a force of friction due to the air resistance uh, per per parallel to the velocity. That doesn't affect the acceleration though. We're only interested in this direction, the, acce the, ac the direction of the acceleration. So since the only force that is in the direction of the acceleration is the force of friction, what we have is the force of friction is equal to mv squared over r. Right? The acceleration, centripetal acceleration, v squared over r. And we know that the force of friction here, because it's a nice flat road, is mu times m times g, and that's equal to mv squared over r. So right away what you see is we have mass on both sides of this equation, so it cancels, and the minimum coefficient needed is just going to be v squared divided by g times r. So mu, when you put in the numbers, 20 meters per second, squared divided by gravity 9.80 meters per second squared and the radius of this circle which is 85 meters we get a minimum coefficient of friction needed as 0.48 okay what that means again is that if the coefficient of friction goes down because the road gets wet or icy the car will start to slide at that speed. If the car slows down to a slower speed, there would be less friction required. If the car speeds up more than 20 meters per second, it's in danger of losing its grip and sliding. Okay. So again, what we're doing is applying uh, Newton's second law, keeping in mind that the acceleration now is a centripetal acceleration. Okay. So using the equations that we developed in the last video for centripetal acceleration and solving for an unknown, in this case mu. Uh, quite often you might be solving for radius or speed or um, there might be a combination of forces. There could be a tension force if this object was tied to a string. Uh, but really all you're doing is setting up Newton's second law, uh, keeping in mind that the acceleration of the object is a centripetal acceleration. Okay, in the next video, we'll talk about vertical circular motion, and that's going to be more complicated because now the force of gravity is going to be in the direction of the acceleration.